the drug talk. So have you had it yet? How'd it go? Maybe you were caught off guard, but don't worry, you can come back from it. Or are you putting it off because you're scared? Or maybe you just don't know how to start? If so, we've got you. And if you've had it, we're here to tell you it's not just one talk. Sorry, it's a lot. Uh, I'm your host, Jody Sweeten, and on this week's episode of Awkward Conversations, we're talking about strategies to have the talk. And our first guest is Dr. Gary Kirkulis, a pediatrician whose office is a 40-foot mobile medical unit that travels to various homeless shelters in Phoenix, providing free medical care to families, and also is a spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Welcome, Dr. Gary. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, love what you do, by the way. Do really, really incredible work. Um, and, and since 1986, Ray Lozano has been combining humor and education to reach thousands of middle and high school students per year about the dangers of drug and alcohol use. An accomplished stand-up comedian, Ray has found a unique way to turn the talk into a less intimidating and more engaging dialogue. And today he's here to share how we might be able to use this lighter touch to engage with our kids. Hi, Ray. Hey, how you doing? Great. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, and next up, we have my friend. She's stolen our hearts since Curly Sue. She rocked the stage on Broadway. She blew us away on The Voice. She's not just a superstar. She's also a super mom to three amazing kiddos. My friend, the one and only Allison Porter. Hi. What's up, girlfriend? How are you? I'm very good. I'm so glad you're here today to have this talk with us. Same, same. Uh, next up is a dear friend of the show as well, the devoted dad, acclaimed actor, writer, and producer known for his roles in Star Wars, Heroes, and Alias. In addition, he's the host of his very own series, The Caregivers, and a podcast called Talk About It, where he dives deep into conversations about epilepsy awareness. I want to welcome back the always engaging and wonderful Greg Grunberg. Always. Always. <laughs> always. Always, always. Right. Well, I'm on a And, street. of course, my fabulous going. co-host, Amy McCarthy. Hi, I'm Amy McCarthy, and I'm the Director of Social Work at the Adolescent Substance Use and Addiction Program at Boston Children's Hospital. Today we, we are joined, we have, I think, the biggest guest group that we have had on any of our episodes of Awkward Conversations. Um, and, you know, I would like to, like to start with you, Dr. Gary. Um, you know, the talk, I think. You know, most of us think we have to wait till like middle school or high school. When can we really start opening the door and having these conversations with our kids? I, I think it's the, the earlier the better, um, and, and there's several reasons for that. Um, I think kindergarten, first grade, certainly around by the time that they're six, it's a really good time. And, and, and the reason for that is, uh, as parents and guardians, it's our job to inform our children about the decisions that they're going to have to eventually make by themselves. And at that age, they're very impressionable. They're they're learning about the world, so why not start then? Additionally, the, the added benefit is if you start that early, then when they're older and they're in middle school and high school, it's not that awkward because you've already been talking about it since they've been in first grade. Right. Normal, normalize those awkward conversations. Absolutely. That's a theme here for sure. <laughs> yes, yes. Allison, your kids are, I mean, you have a, a, a new one, but how old are your kids now? Uh, almost 11 and 9. Okay, so have you started having these conversations yet? Yeah, I'm not sure it's been like a sit-down conversation, but I'm not really the type of parent who shields their kids from anything that they're going to inevitably see on their own anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather them hear it from me first and sort of get... Uh, you know, a little clue into what they're going to experience in life. Right. Um, and they've definitely, we've definitely had talks about this. Right. Yeah, I, I have to say, I think uh, you just hit on something that's really important. It's, it's not necessarily the big talk. Right. Like, I've got three boys from 27, 24, 20. And if you, if you, if you set that up as like, this is the time, that's right. not what it is. They're going to get, they, they, especially today when I was growing right. up. Yeah. Okay. You know, a uh, hundred years ago, it was like, all right, Ray Lozano is going to talk to you <laughs> about sex right. and drugs. Um, but no, they're going to pick up on stuff through osmosis, through their friends, through the internet, through whatever at a very young age. So it's, it's building that trust. It's this balance between like having a conversation and open dialogue more than the talk what's been effective in our family is the listen. Mm. When you start this talk, tell me what, you know, what's going on. Are any of your friends, you know, doing drugs or have you heard about drugs or whatever? They'll start the car. You don't have to provide way too, because it's scary if you go, right. all right, here's, yeah. you know, but, but if you're, if they're, if they're, they're giving you little hints, like, oh yeah, so-and-so says that his older brother smokes weed and you're like, oh, okay. Then you can, 
you can you know right. take it from there. But I, I, we've always found it's like get the information from them. Let them open right. up that dialogue. They're not going to well, just. We talk about it a lot on this show about rather than having one 60 minute conversation, you know, have 61 minute conversations. And obviously right. that's just sort of a, a rounded number. But it's really about not, you know, uh, there used to be, of course, we all know the sitcom episodes of we're going to sit down and we're going to have the serious talk and a very, a very special, special episode. episode. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, these days, that's that's not how we really reach our kids. And, and Ray has does such a great job at incorporating humor. Yeah, you know what? Exactly what Greg was saying. Because when I'm talking with parents that want to have what you would call the talk, just that term, the talk, is so intimidating for parents. And so it, when I started talking to my kids about drugs and alcohol, I, I literally started with my daughter when she was probably about three or four. And I would sit on the floor and we'd play Barbies and... I'd be Ken and I'd be walking around and somewhere along the line, Ken would ask her something that, you know, that could be drug related and just to see how she would react in those kind of situations, you know, and I taught her quite a bit just through sitting on the ground. So when I talk with parents, I'm like, don't let your kids know, okay, we're going to have this talk at seven o'clock, you know, kind of thing. It's more of a, hey, you're playing a game, exactly what Greg said, you know, hey, I read this thing about marijuana. What do you think about it? And what I always tell parents is whoever asks the question guides the conversation. And so if parents are asking the questions, uh, you know, what do you think about weed? Uh, what do your friends think about weed? What's going to happen when you get offered marijuana? As a family, what do you think we think about weed? And you start building all those things in the kids. And, and also, <clears throat> these uh, drugs that kids are exposed to are legal. And uh, psilocybin and mushrooms is about to... There's a huge mm. conference going on right now with thousands of people in Denver right now. And they're legalizing mm -hmm. mushrooms and molly and everything, all that stuff. They're going to legalize that. I drive down Ventura Boulevard and it's like, you know, you can't hide it. I think our kids are so desensitized almost to, you know, uh, cannabis dispensaries and things like that because they really are everywhere. I do want to say, though, that, and Amy and I were having this conversation the other day, the most dangerous substance out there is alcohol. Yes. The more people die of alcohol-related diseases and more people, I think you said in 2021, than COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, very often we talk about, um, you know, we see these new things that pop up of like cannabis dispensaries, but how often and particularly in, in you know, it depends on what area of town you're in too. You can walk down the street and there can be, you know, a liquor store on every corner. Right. And it's about, it's having those conversations regardless, I think, of, of the legality, no, that's true. but of the social acceptance of it and i think you know it, it we often start talking to our kids about smoking drinking you know sort of in that order because it is the things that are most socially acceptable and you know smoking not as much anymore but vaping and you know uh, uh, nicotine pens and things like that right. um but i always like to, to to remind people that you know alcohol is kind of the the first thing that is usually in people's homes is easily accessible yep. Uh, and yep. and is, you know, one of the things that as a society we've kind of gone like, well, kids are going to drink. And I would say, like, anecdotally in my work with young people every day, legalization, you know, has had a huge impact on how the way that young people look at these things. You know, they often say to me, it's natural. Like, what's the big deal? Because that's mm -hmm. kind of the public health message. Well, it's not a public health message, but it's the perceived public health message about it. And I have young people that I work with who say, I don't want to smoke anymore, but I can't get away. I see the billboards. There's the dispensary is right there on the way to the gym. I'm trying to go to the gym to work out. And here and now I'm at the dispensary again. And, um, you know, I think... Another thing that we think a lot about in our program is how so many of these products are now marketed to kids, like the vape pens, the dab pens. You know, I've had a mom say to me, how come my kid can get cotton candy flavored, you know, like cannabis vapes, but I can't get nicotine replacement therapy that, you know, isn't anything but mint. Right. Like, you know, um, and so I do think we want to be really thoughtful of, you know, the, of that impact on how kids, you know, perceive these things and bring that into this conversation, these listening sessions, uh, these talks that we're talking about here today. That's absolutely true because kids are getting marketed too. So as parents, as the theme of this conversation, you do have to have that balance of information coming from, from their parents and their guardians because they're going to be marketed to. Right. I mean, we got rid of, you know, Joe Camel and all those sorts of things. And now it's, you know, there's so many other oh. things coming up. Also, some of their heroes. I mean, you look at I'm, all these people, they make their, this is their, this is their right. persona. This is right. who they are. And it's cool in their world. 
and then it's not, <laughs> as we've seen. But it's not even marketing. It's like it's just it's right. in the ether. It's out. I, you there, know, and I, you know? I I I love Ray what you do. And one of the things that you were talking about is you know being and that we've all talked about is being honest and open, but also making the conversation light funny we can right. use humor using humor sarcasm not having you know again the very special episode with your kids i think is really helpful ray in in your conversations and your work where you go and speak to kids what have you found to be like really effective and what really reaches them oh uh, you know what it's definitely humor so anytime i do a presentation they always do ray lozano is going to be talking about drugs and alcohol what I have come to love is the collective groan that high school students make. <laughs> right. Uh, right. We all about know <laughs> about this, you know. And within a couple of minutes, or not even that long, within 30 seconds, because I open up with a strong humor stuff, and almost it's literally like stand-up, all of a sudden, all these walls on kids go down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I do these funny stories, and then I throw in one piece of information. And so the best thing that we can do is, you know, I, I have found, and it's made me really successful in this, is just blanking it with humor, putting a, a blanket around that with humor, and uh, kids accept that. And I have kids walk out, say, man, this, you know, this is great information, because I talk to them about, you know, 434,000 people are going to die this year from cigarette use. That's 50 people every hour, 1,200 people a day from cigarettes. That's hard information. You know, the addiction level on vaping for you guys can happen within two days. That's terrible information. But I wrap it in such a way that there's humor that kids go, oh, I never thought about it that way. As parents, we always want to do that. Don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't hang out with those kids. But for a kid's brain, it doesn't work that way because they have the big why question in their head because their brain's trying to figure it out. So when a parent says something like, you know, clean your room and a kid goes, why? They're not challenging your authority. Their brain's trying to figure out, why do I need to clean this room? It's so true. I know when I try to have a serious conversation, I'm like, let me just, like, let's just all laugh lighten a little, a little bit little. and lighten. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, according to SAMHSA, 12 to 17-year-olds were more likely to believe that their parents would strongly disapprove of their substance use if they had communicated with their parents about the dangers of substance use. So even just having these conversations, whether or not we think that they're sinking in, um, kids are, are hearing it and they are, you know, they, they're, they're absorbing, like you talk about, sort of that osmosis, absorbing all of that information and how your family, you know, uh, um, talks about that stuff. One of the things to that point that we've done and I've done is I tell my boys, because we have find my phone, right. you know, and because and our oldest has epilepsy. So he goes out with his buddies at night. I need to know where he is in case right. he has a seizure. I got to be able to jump in the car. But, but with the other two, I mean, they're baseball players, college, this and that. I tell them, text me, pick me up. I don't need to know you're drunk. Right. I don't need to know anything. I'm never going to ask, I tell them. Don't worry about it. It's, I'm not – just two things. Don't lie ever. Lie to me. And just text me that. I will right. be there. Leave your car. And they've, they've taken me up yeah. on that a couple of times, and it's wonderful. You know, I want to add to that as well, especially with the talk – and the thing I think sometimes parents don't think about is the setting. Just think about, you know, if you're at work and your boss says, you know, come on into the office, I need to have a talk with you, shut the door on your way in. Now you're sitting across from somebody with this big, huge desk. They got the, you know, they have that setting of authority, which is important in that situation. But when you're working with your kids, man, take them out to breakfast, you know, take them out to lunch. And just as you're sitting there, work it into the conversation, man. You know, you got drunk the other night. Uh, it, what happened? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it doesn't have to be right in the moment, to Greg's point. Like, I'm going to come pick you up. Let me know. Let's make sure you're safe. Maybe the next day we'll go get waffles. Maybe we'll talk about it in the car. You know, when the child is sobered up and everyone can have a conscious, cognizant conversation, you've kind of calmed down. And I think, you know, to your point, Jody you know, what What you permit, you promote is a thing that we talk a lot about in our program. And to that point, what you don't permit, you don't promote. And so when you talk to your child and you make it clear that using substances is not acceptable, you know, you're setting an, an expectation for them. And kids are looking for kind of, you know, those, those guidelines. They're looking for the walls so that they can meet our expectations. And if we don't make them clear, then we don't give them an opportunity to, to meet our expectations. Right. Uh, Dr. Gary, I'd love to hear some of the do's and don'ts maybe mm. that you have for parents uh, 
trying to maybe have this conversation for the first time with their kids, what are some of the ways um, that you found to be really effective? Yeah, so sort of to adding on to the location, um, I think eating is good too mm. uh, as well because then you're doing something else besides talking about mm. the, the issue. And when you're done eating, it's sort of like this nice natural way, okay, maybe the conversation didn't go as you'd like, but now we're done eating and we can go do something else. Um, n- another good location is in the car. Um, you know, you're, you're driving, you're focused on the road, you, there's no eye contact, it's less intimidating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they're a captive audience, so they can't like escape <laughs> to the bedroom, right? Um, so that's another good place to do it. Um, as, far, as far as don'ts, um, I think it's been touched on a little bit. Kids, especially teenagers, uh, don't want to feel like they're being interrogated, um, especially with teens. Like they probably know somebody in their school or their friends who have used and experimented or that maybe they've experimented and they don't want to feel like they're going to get in trouble. So make it about some about the general idea. So you would never lead in with, are you using drugs? You'd lead in with, so I hear, you know, in the media, a lot of kids are using fentanyl. Mm. Um, yeah. What do you feel about that? It's an open-ended question. It gets, you know, it's not just a lecture. They're talking. It's a free uh, exchange of ideas. So I think that's really important. Uh, and then you can kind of just progressively lead it into um, are any of your friends using? And if they did, what would you say to them? Um, and then you can get it even a little bit closer where you can say uh, if, if someone offered you, what would you say? You know, give them a loud practice. So I think those are some good mm-hmm. ideas to make it less integratory, uh, less of a lecture. Um, for, for parents. You and I have grown up in sort of a different way and in a much more public way. Um, and I know, you know, the conversations that I've had with my girls about drinking and using are, are a little bit different because, you know, I, I, they know that I have right. struggled with substance use. They know that, um, you know, I've, I've been up and down in sobriety, of, you know, uh, when I was younger. And, you know, they know a lot of those things. I wrote a book on it. It's all, my story is out there. Yeah. Um, so I think it, sort of like like you, we've talked about like really not hiding anything because when so much of that is out there and you know, everything's easily Googleable these days, including your parents, right. um, yeah. you know, uh, I, yes, it's, they can find it. They can find it. And um, have you found that that has led to more kind of open and honest conversations? Because it's oh, yeah. like, I, what am I going to do? No, totally. Absolutely. And I mean, I... You know, my kids go to an AA meeting via Zoom right. almost every morning. Right. You know, they're getting ready for school, and I'm, you know, I'm on my meeting, and that's kind of a normal thing in our house. And what I think it's cool about that is, you know, they're hearing stories. They're hearing what happens to people if that's the road that they choose, you right. know, and they'll ask, you know, did that happen to you? Well, not exactly that, but yeah. And then there's these tools Right. Solution, Which, right? They're like, also hearing solution. Who know who who before you know your kids start to experience this, like to be able to give them the tools that now we have to not mm-hmm. be doing that before they even get there right. is kind of what I hope will be sort of a saving grace for them, you know, because okay, well, do you have, um, you know, do you know what surrender means? Right. And do you have a higher power of your own understanding? And these things that I've been taught that before right. I, I knew those things, you know, I was not able to stay sober. So yes, I mean, I think for them, it's very talked about. It's very, it's a right. part of their lives, right. um, and I think that that's really awesome and they also love music and half of the people that they love I'm they're like well is this person still alive is this person no you know well what happened well right drugs alcohol you know substance abuse and so I think those are other ways you know segues to get into talking about how this can affect your right. life um but but I I really do feel like you know I, like you said I have no, I can't hide from it you know right. I, I've talked about it, I've been open about it and I think that regardless of what happens with them, they'll definitely have some sort of understanding of what to do, at least, if if it is the case. We'll be right back after this message. Saving lives means staying informed. Knowing the dangers of using fake prescription pills can help those you care about and keep our community safe. As a parent, educator, neighbor, or friend, we all play a role in building safe and healthy futures for ourselves and our loved ones. Do your part to take the first step today. Visit GetSmartAboutDrugs.com to access education, prevention, and treatment resources. Fake prescription pills laced with fentanyl are deadly. Be their protector. Be informed. Visit GetSmartAboutDrugs.com. I spoke about this last season, but I grew up with a family history of substance use disorders, uh, you know, pretty prevalent 
and it was always a conversation in, in my family's household, and I felt like that was incredibly protective to me as a young person making these decisions about whether or not to initiate substances or not, or when to or how to. And um, I also think, you know, not everyone does have a substance use history in their in their families. And for those those families, I would encourage folks to think about, you know, having this conversation with their children, being open and honest, potentially about not all the details of their of their past history, but perhaps like the the you know bigger picture of it all right um but but make sure when you have that conversation to be very clear with your child that the substances of today are very different than the substances that that you yeah. may have used as a as a person growing up um because sometimes your child will look at that and say well my mom and my mom is fine my dad is fine my caregiver right. you know grew up in the, and they're okay so it's probably fine if i experiment or if i do these things too and and that's not always the case what rings with that statement is especially with with marijuana cannabis use uh, you'll get a lot of parents who say well you know I, I used it in the 60s 70s 80s 90s it was mild euphoria but that's we're dealing with a completely different drug now that was you know three to five percent thc mild euphoria Correct. now we're dealing with strains with 30 percent mm -hmm. uh, gummies and resins with 90 percent completely different beasts so you have to put that in perspective if your child knows that you used when you you have to emphasize that we're dealing with, and we're and we're learning a lot more about the effects of cannabis on on developing brains which we never knew ever right, before right too. and i think that's the important thing too is sort of balancing the um um, you know, this ongoing conversation uh, and balancing the fear and the anxiety that we have as parents that we hear out there in the world and, and you know, using some lightness, some humor to talk about it, but also talking about how things are, are different now. And, you know, the, the stupid things that we used to do 20 years ago are no longer just the silly, stupid things you do as a kid. They can be uh, not only life altering, but life ending. Yeah. Um, and to the point um, of Dr. Gary, cannabis use now, it, it really is, it can be just as addictive, right. in my experience, as any other hard drug. I mean, the, the types of um, side effects are so different today because of the different potencies and the different strains, and you're not really knowing what you're doing, and is, is this this or that. And just from experience, I mean, I that particular substance has been a really tough one for me in my life and in my sobriety journey. And there have been many times where I'm like, oh, it's just, you know, and also like, you know, it's so desensitized now. It's right. everywhere. But it has taken to me, me to my knees many times. Right. And so I like to talk about that. It's not just pot. It's not just, you know, a doobie at Woodstock. <laughs> we're not doing that anymore. Right. You know, this is like science. Now we're in the lab. We don't right. know what's going on. And our, the effects on our body is really completely different well, than it was. The, it's the a drug is a drug is a drug kind of thing sure. too, right? And like, why are we, what's the function of our relationship with this substance right. as well? And, and, you know, in my world, our oldest son, you know, Jake takes five medicines in the morning. I mean, he's on a cocktail right. because he has right. epilepsy and these are anti-seizure meds and everybody's got something and you then, and, and one of the medications that Jake takes is, I, mean, I won't name it, but it's, it's a CBD mm -hmm. FDA approved medication. Yeah, so really here we are talking about helpful that. For, for seizures. Ex oh, extremely. But it also, it makes the other drugs he's on more, some of them less effective, more, some of them more effective and it's, and it's controlled. I mean, when, when. At first, I mean, I, I know this is a little off topic, but at first we were like, oh, CBD helps. You know, he's still having breakthrough seizures. And people are like, oh, try these gummies. Make some brownies. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I need to know exactly. And it was under a doctor's care and all that. But my point is that somebody goes, to, a kid goes to a party and just thinks it's innocent smoking weed, but they're on some other medication mm -hmm. too. And it could, the totally. combinations can be. And, dangerous. you know, one of the things that we talk about a, a lot on this show is, you know, the idea of um, counterfeit counterfeit pills, counterfeit drugs, things that you think you know what yeah. you're getting, whether it's through an online pharmacy, whether it's through your plug on Snapchat, whether it's, you know, through whatever, um, you know, you think like, oh, I'm buying, you know, a marijuana cartridge, but really it's, they have mixed it with something else. You're not getting it at a licensed dispensary. You're not, you know, the, you're opening yourself up in ways um, that I don't think were as prevalent when we were young yeah. yeah i mean we talked about you know yeah. episodes on, on one pill can kill and that is is so true it's in pills but also we're seeing this all the time in other supplies you know I've, I've had kids have it in cannabis vapes i've had people report it in nicotine vapes um you know nothing really feels like it's immune now at this mm. point and it's important to emphasize that in your conversation with your child or the many conversations that you have with them about this topic
Yeah, no, all of that's, uh, yeah, very important to have that conversation. And definitely talking about, uh, you know, going back to marijuana. Because I think sometimes adults still have that 60s, 70s, 80s, bong, you know, listening to music, eating Doritos kind of thing. But because I've had parents tell me, well, at least they're just smoking weed. They're not doing such and such. And it's just that misconception of how dangerous marijuana has become nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it's also providing the, you know, real actual statistical information over fear. I think, you know, we hear so much in the news and we think, you know, everything that we hear is is 100 percent true and it's a panic. And we, you know, we see these stories go viral on social media. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes those can have, do more harm than good when we hear about things because then people go, oh, well, that didn't really happen or that's not really true. And so then we find ourselves discounting all of the information and, you know, really arming yourselves with with facts and statistics and things like that from professionals, from websites, which we will have included in the links, uh, uh, you know, in the show notes, all of the links and things that we've yeah. talked about. But where are some really... I'll tell you, ma marijuana is a gateway to waffles. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that's... that out. Yes, that is, yes, uh, it is. That is definitely, <laughs> definitely a gateway to waffles. You can You're never right. have just one waffle. No, it's... No, no. no you can't. It's never the first donut. It's the third that's the problem. Um, <laughs> But mm -hmm. Dr. Gary, um, what are some of the resources and things that you um, can direct parents to or that you maybe use yourself? Absolutely. So uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics has a website, a parenting website called healthychildren.org. Okay. Uh, and you have a variety of topics um, and they're all written by pediatricians. Mm -hmm. And so if you need information about dating information, substance use, alcohol, uh, it's all there and it's a really good source and it's all you know fact checked and everything. So Great. And we will make sure and put that in the show notes with a, with a link. And we don't want to forget about GetSmartAboutDrugs.com, which, you know, was something we've talked about a lot during this series. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, will be in the show notes, too. If I can just throw out, if anybody's listening to this and they're, and they're you know, they want information on epilepsy as it relates to cannabis or anything else, um, I have a website called TalkAboutIt.org. And I started it many years ago as a, play, as a way to inform and remove stigma associated with epilepsy and seizures. It's now expanded to everything from Alzheimer's to everything, just talking about exa exactly mm -hmm. what we're doing here. But um, if you go to talkaboutit.org, you'll find your favorite celebrity. I'm going to rope Jody into doing uh, <laughs> one of these uh, for me for Absolutely. sure. It's payback Absolutely. time. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's, there's PSAs on there, but there's also just conversations with other caregivers and other parents and and peer-to-peer uh, -peer stuff. It's, it's, it's really great, but all the answers come from, uh, you know, uh, neurologists, epileptologists, um, uh, you know, RNs, all the, the people that – really can like a celebrity will ask a question then we get the professionals answering them so it's just a wealth of, of information and a great place to connect with others fantastic um you know keeping the conversation going is really the 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 important thing that we constantly stress in this and and that you know it's not just a one and done situation this isn't just you know mm -hmm. we said it this isn't the talk it's the first of many talks, <laughs> which doesn't quite have the same ring, but it it really is. Um, Ray, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, yeah, the, the conversation. And so it's not just the talk, it's the ongoing conversation. Because what you tell somebody, you know, at age four, five, six, what I told my daughter at age four, five, six, I'm going to want to change that information up when she's, you know, 10 and 11, and then when she's 15 and 16. And so it's an ongoing conversation. And there's been times when I've talked to my son about certain things, and I'll tell them, this conversation isn't over till you ask three questions. And sometimes it'll take him, you know, a month or back in the day, a month or, you know, even longer to come up with a question that he wanted to ask about that. But it left it open. Right. And so he knew that he could approach me in that. I love that. That's, That's so awesome. smart. And by the way, I have to say also, if, if one of, you know, two partners, husband, wife, 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 husband, husband, whatever, if the kid, one of your kids gravitates towards one of you, don't take right. it personally. Mm. Like there are moments when my son, one of my boys will be like, you know what? Mom's got this. I'm already talking to her about it. I'm like, oh, great. Just let it go. Right. And, and then conversely, it's been, God, mom doesn't understand. I just, can I, can I just talk to you about this? And it's like, great. So, because right. sometimes it can be like, what? Don't take right. it personally. Don't, don't take it personally. And it's all, it can be coaches. It can be counselors. It can be yes. aunts, uncles. I know my girls have, you know, and I'm, I know yours do too. Like, just a, a solid group of people around them who I trust, who I know have the right and correct information. And I have told my, my girls, look, you guys are getting older. I get it. I'm mom. I'm lame. 
I, it's just, but even if I say the same exact thing that one of my best friends who they think is super cool, even if I say the same thing, they're like, but mom's lame. It's just, it hits different. Yeah. I get it. I'm 41 years old. My mom tells me stuff and I, she'll send me an article. I'm like, oh my God, mom, here we go. You know, it, <laughs> but what I've learned is, is that it, it, the other, as long as someone is giving them the correct information that someone that I trust, and I know that these conversations are happening, it means that it's not only on me, but it means that there, it's, you know, again, that village mentality, that surrounding, that circle of care for your kids. You know what? We took care of that because I knew that that was going to happen in talking with parents. So when our son hit right around age 14 or 15, me and my wife had that conversation. I says, we're going to get to the point where we are irrelevant to our son in these conversations. And so when I'm talking to parents, I said, make that intentional. Don't hope you're going to find somebody that'll talk yeah, to your kids. Right. Find right. somebody that's right. going to talk to your kids, that's awesome. pay for their dinner, let them go out, you know, throw them a few bucks, however it works but be intentional about having somebody in your child's life. There's so much that I love about what you just said, Ray, and that intentionality is one of those things. And I think that coordination with the adults in your child's life is really important too, because like we're talking about, there's so much new information about all of these different things and not all the adults are gonna know the information that we're you know, talking about right mm -hmm. now. And so making sure that you're getting that information to those people to try to make sure, you know, to, to ensure that that message is kind of clear across the board. And even like when, when you have a partner too, like coordinating with them, like, you know, I can see a lot of kids saying like, I'm going to talk to mom about this and then being like, well, I didn't actually talk to mom about it. <laughs> right, like, right. you know, I'm like, they're like, You're I just like, want hey, to have this conversation. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And so like, did you, did you talk to them about it? You know? And, and so coordinating across the board can also, be really helpful. Also, I just want, like, every kid is so different. You know, like my yeah. daughter is like, I will never. That's so disgusting. How could someone put smoke in their mouth? You know, all these right. things. And my son's like, yeah, I'll probably try it. <laughs> so, yeah, of course you're gonna try it, you know? Right. Some one of them is gonna try it. So it's like I think it's better than just like you better not, you know. Right. So all of these things that we're talking yeah. about is like that Im immediate parental response is like, I will kill you. <laughs> but I think what this is opening up and what this what needs to be talked about more is how are you gonna respond if someone says, Yeah, I'm probably gonna try it to sort of have it in your arsenal beforehand, like Ray was saying, you yeah. know, like be ahead of the game. That's yeah. kind of genius. So, yeah. Ray, I'll be calling you for parenting I advice <laughs> after this. No, I love I love I'm gonna call you. I love what you just said. I mean that to to not make this this big bad monster stay away. Right. Don't even that's not right, gonna right. happen. They're gonna try it. So when, when, if your kid says exactly that, you just be oh, like, oh, well, okay, yeah. well, well, yeah, here's what know. could happen. Here's the things that are going on. Right. Here's what you need to know. Arming your kids with information I, as opposed to scaring them and, and mm -hmm. over exaggerating to where then they Making find out yourself even more unapproachable. Well, and not only that, but then your yeah. kids are going to find out that like what you said, you know, we will kill you. What? And then the kid goes, well, that's not true. But how can you now tell you've, me? You wrote a book about it. Right. But now you've <laughs> lost that, that trust of them going. Going, yeah. My parent right. is providing me with accurate, reasonable information. Yeah. And and I think I've, that is, you know, teens are, they think that we fly off the handle at anything. And we do sometimes, I do. But really having reasonable, honest, open conversations and having them not when you find the drugs in your kid's room, right. not when they come home and they smell like alcohol, but having them at, you know, six, seven, eight, all the way through so that if yeah. they do run into these situations, you go, ah, wow. Well, here's a, here's a teachable moment. I, I have a, Ray, just real quick. I have a, a, um, a question for everybody because this happened with us many years ago, but uh, the conversation was flowing so well. And then I, um, I started asking one of my boys, I'm like, so what happened to Steven? I, you don't hang out with him anymore. He's like, oh, he's just, he's, he's smoking weed all the time. He's just like, he, you know, does his vapes, goes into the bathroom at school, whatever. And I had just had a conversation with that kid's dad where the kid goes, man, I'm so lucky that we're so lucky that our kids haven't fallen in with the wrong crap. So now I know something and I feel obligated to tell that kid's dad, listen, I heard something, but I don't want, I don't want my son to go, what did you do? I told you that in confidence. It's a really tricky yeah, thing. I've been and, there. and again, my kids are athletes. So there's this moment where it was like, I was like, how come he's not on the team? What's going on? That's how it happened. But 
what, how, what is, I'm like, Dr. Gary, what is your advice on that? Like, if, if all of a sudden you find out something, do you act on it? Because I would want to be told. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you want that two-way conversation to continue going. And if you betray your, your child's trust, that, that could jeopardize it in a big way. Um, but at the same time, we need to, to look out for the, the care of, of, of their peers. And if they're doing something that's very dangerous, then their parent does have a right to know. Uh, it's, that's a really gray area. I'm not sure how to it's, give it's, a one size fits all answer so. to that. I think it's a good teachable moment for, you know, you're you're not hanging out with your friend who is your friend anymore. And it sounds like, you know, we should be worried and concerned about your friend. And how can we approach this together? Like, you know, we need to we need to get your friend help. If something happened to your friend and you were holding this information, I wouldn't want you to feel, you know, that that you didn't do something that you right. wanted to. And and you can exactly the way yeah, I handled you can just, it. You know, bring yeah. it together. And, and it's a bonding, perhaps moment, relationship yeah. builder, maybe bonding, um, bonding, bonding and yeah. relationships are mm -hmm. key. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, we have such a great group on here to have the talk about the talk um, and, and all of the links and, and things that we have uh, talked about, any of the resources that we've mentioned, um, websites, all of that kind of stuff is going to be in the show notes. So if you've been watching and you are curious about uh, any of the things that we've mentioned, I promise all of that information will be available to you um, so that you can be armed with all the correct information to go forward with not the talk, but the many talks that you will have with your kids about this. Uh, Greg, Allison, Ray, I would love to hear about um, any of the projects that you have coming up that you'd like to promote that people can check you out in. Allison, what do you have going on? I have a kid who's singing Let It Go from Frozen on Instagram right now, and the video is at 26 million views. <laughs> Yes. I've worked my whole no life way. to try to be an Instagram sensation, but my 20-month-old <laughs> completely wiped me out. No, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm actually in the studio. I just started yesterday recording a new album. So awesome. I am, I'm in there and, and awesome. uh, trying to do it, you know, just one day at a time. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, one day at a time. Uh, Greg, what about you? Uh, well, I'm shooting, well, we're on strike, but uh, I'm shooting a show called Duster for uh, Max, and uh, it's a really cool period thing with Josh Holloway and, and uh, Rachel Hilson and me and a few other people. But uh, in the meantime, I've been doing game shows and stuff. But I want to just take this opportunity. Please, if you're a caregiver, and we're all caregivers to our family members and friends, go to thecaregiverseries.com. It's, it's something I'm so incredibly proud of. And you'll, you'll just hear other conversations. But it's epilepsy-centric, but don't let that you know, turn you away. We can all learn from each other just as mm -hmm. caregivers. Transferable skills all around. Absolutely. Ray, what about you? Well, it takes us about nine months to develop a new program, and so we are releasing uh, the beginning in July a uh, presentation for 6th through 12th graders on fentanyl. It's called Contaminated, Everything Good and Bad All at Once, and uh, we're talking about the dangers and how the addictive quality is, and uh, so it's been a big request that we've gotten probably for the past year or so coming in and speaking to like 8th graders about fentanyl. Uh, so we're getting ready to release that, and all that information is on uh, on my website if people are interested. And Dr. Gary, what about you? So I, uh, as a spokesperson for the American Academy of Pediatrics, I do a lot of parenting uh, blogs that I do on healthychildren.org, which is a great site for all things, whether mm -hmm. it's how to put a baby to sleep, how much formula they need, information about dating, and et cetera. So that's where they, people can find me. Okay, great. Uh, and as always, again, links in the show notes. Make sure you check those out. Um, Remember that your relationships don't have to be perfect. The talk doesn't have to go perfect the first time you have it, the third time you have it. Um, it it's so much better to just show up and be present as a parent than worry about being the perfect parent. And thank you so much for joining us for the final episode of season three of Awkward Conversations. It has been such a pleasure to bring you all of this information. I hope it has helped. I hope you have wonderful, open, honest, real conversations with your kids. I hope you use all of the links and the resources that have been provided by all of our amazing guests. Thank you so much, Amy. It's so great to be in the same room as you this season. It's been incredible. It's been incredible. <laughs> wonderful guests, wonderful host. Thank you, thank you, gonna... and and I, I really am so grateful to you and the work that you do, uh, and and everyone in the recovery community, whether uh, it is through professionals, whether it is through meetings, whether it is through twelve steps, whether it is just through being a caregiver for the people that you love in your family. Uh, so thank you for joining us this season of Awkward Conversations, and we will see you next time. Make sure to check out GetSmartAboutDrugs.com. Parents, caregivers, you can find so many resources of great information there about how to talk to your kids and make these conversations a little less awkward.
A huge thank you to the Elks DAP, which is the largest all volunteer nationwide drug awareness program. And also a huge thanks to the DEA for their outreach program and for making this possible. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Awkward Conversation series are solely those of the individuals, speakers, commentators, experts, and or hosts involved, and do not necessarily reflect nor represent those of the production, associates, or broadcaster, or any of its employees. Production is not responsible and does not verify for accuracy any of the information contained in the series available for viewing. The primary purpose of this series is to educate and inform. This series does not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. This series is available for private, non-commercial, commercial use only. The production, broadcaster, or its channel cannot be held accountable for all or any views expressed during this program.